A lot of people speaking asking me to do a video on Tenouchi, so I'm gonna share everything I know about Tenouchi, which means it's gonna be a short video. So. another kind of tips video my name is Jose and today I am going to talk I'm gonna tell you everything I know about Tenochi so, a lot of people want to hit harder they want to hit faster they want to just be sharper all of that comes with proper Tenochi Tenochi is a crucial part it's a very important part of kendo and it makes such a big difference when you have that down Tenochi like learning Tenochi or improving my Tenochi changed my kendo completely. For me personally, one thing that made me realize that I needed to work on my tenochi was a time when I was in Japan, I was doing kakarigeko with this dude that he's been doing kakarigeko for like the past like 20 minutes because he got late to class and I was the last person to do kakarigeko with. He was just so much sharper than me even though I was fresh. I mean, it was after class, but so I was fresh, definitely fresher than he was. Luckily, somebody took a video and showed that to me and I realized that I was using my arms to move my sword. The way that he was doing it, he was using literally just his hands and his wrists. Realizing that made me want to just work specifically in Tenochi. I'm gonna use all my best Japanese translation skills, Google Translate, and you'll see that the translation for Tenochi is the inside of the hand. Tenochi, I'm going to refer to today as what's happening inside of your hands when you're swinging your sword. I'm going to make another video about swinging your sword, so please, if you haven't already, subscribe. Before I do that, I'm gonna tell you why Tenochi is important. Because one of the main reasons why I think Tenochi is so important is because it will allow you to save energy and not actually use or have useless motions in your body. More specifically, using your arms, to, like your right arm especially, to pull and push the sword. Now, before I go into what Tenochi is, I'm gonna tell, I want to tell you what Tenochi is not. One of the most common analogies, I guess, that I hear about when people are trying to explain Tenochi is the whole thing with a ring in a towel. Now, while that is not wrong, I think sometimes it opens up to misinterpretation. A while back, I was in a seminar and the sensei, I, I, after the seminar, I, we, you know, we went to like the dinner and whatever, and the sensei actually started talking to me, we started talking about Tenochi, and he made a very, very specific annotation to that explanation that it made a lot of sense to me. The problem with that is that when you say ringing a towel to a student, they think just a regular towel, you know, you squeeze it like this to get the water out. What he was explaining is that the towel that you, you should imagine, it's a tea towel, which tend to be like about this big. And a towel this big, you don't squeeze like this. You, you obviously you don't squeeze it like this. You tend to just put it in your hand and squeeze to get the water out. That's very similar to what's happening at the moment of Tenouchi or when you're doing Tenouchi. What you want to do is kind of take that concept into a shinai. Because if you use the other one where it's a big towel, that tends to have people move the hands or move the grip out of position, hurting their Tenouchi and hurting their kendo overall. How to do Tenouchi? It all starts with having the hands in the right position. Imagine that I'm swinging and like a mid swing, what's happening here is that my fingers, these two fingers are not completely tight yet. They're firm on the shinai, but they're not so tight. There's a little bit of flexibility. So as I'm swinging down, these fingers are pulling down the sore or like, you know, squeezing inwards, creating a little bit of extra speed and momentum added to the movement of your arms. I have a firm grip on the shinai. It's not loose, uh, but it's also not tight. So when I'm swinging the sore, I start Talking, we talked about the little towel, right? I start kind of like squeezing here, and the wrist work with the tenochi, but the the hand is doing is doing this motion. It's very interesting because the left hand applies the power. The tenochi will increase the speed of the shinai towards the end of the strike, and the tenochi on the right hand, what it does actually does the opposite. It squeezes but in order to stop the shinai. It does add a little bit of speed at the end, but when you come up with a squeeze, at the end, it's the one responsible of stopping the shinai. Now, I couldn't just talk about Tenochi, we're talking a little bit about the wrists, and the wrists play an important part 
on the swing and stopping the sword. For me, I try to get as much extension as I can without compromising my form. I guess the best um, analogy or the best everyday life action that I can compare it to, if you have like a fly swatter and you're like, you know, you don't go like this, you kind of go like that a little bit of a whip. Or I, for me, I play guitar and I guess I can compare it to like the movement on my wrists when I'm doing like funk rhythms. But if you don't play guitar, I guess that doesn't apply to you. So I'm sorry about that. The wrist is not stiff. You want to, you want to avoid, and this is something that you see a lot in beginners that you, the wrist kind of becomes stiff. This is crucial learning that you're gonna have flexibility on your wrist in order to get that extra sharpness and speed on your sword. One thing that it helped me a lot practice tenochi, improve my tenochi is if you extend your arms out. Right? And try to do the striking, try to do the tenochi, practice the tenochi. That helped me a lot. I'm not clearly gonna do it with a long shin eye. This, this motion, practicing this motion. Practicing that motion helped me a lot. Uh, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you use your hands and your wrist to give that extra snap to the sword. You want to, if you do it correctly, you're gonna feel a clear impact. It's not just a little tap, it's gonna be a clear impact. If you're doing tenuchi correctly, it will allow you to do Nidan Sandan Waza, like as many Waza as you want, without having to coil your arms towards your body and extend them, right? Uh, you can attack like Kotemen. What you want to make sure is that you learn to use properly your wrist and your hands in order to add that extra snap, that extra sharpness to the sword. The way I was explaining, the way I feel it, is that when I'm doing tenochi, the left hand kind of makes it first. He does the tenochi slightly before the right hand, and then the right hand is the one that stops, right? So for me, it's, if you imagine like a big swing, the tenochi starts mid-swing, and then the tenochi in the right hand stops after the left hand. It's, it's, it's almost immediate, but it's definitely a little bit of separation between the two of them. Last recommendation I am going to say for you to start playing around with it and experimenting and studying tenochi is do it slow. Break it down. As a matter of fact, do this with everything you want to study in Kendo. Do it slow. If you can do it slow, then speed will come, especially if you're doing it right. But if you practice the swing slowly and try to understand the mechanics of how to add power without adding that muscle, without putting your body into it like that. With that being said, I think that's all I wanted to do. All I can say at this time about Tenochi, I will keep studying this if I find something new. I'll, I'll share with you. If you have something different, if you have more, please leave it in the comments below. I really appreciate it. I want to learn from you. Please, if you enjoy my videos, consider subscribing to my channel and hit that notification bell so you know when I post new videos. Thank you for watching. I will catch you in the next video.